chased around is Acidic Sliming your opponent into Oblivion. So the first thing I look for in deck lists is how many Acidic Slimes are in main deck and then in the sideboards. Pervasi has three in his main deck and the fourth one in the board. For and McLean? McLean only has two main deck, but he, he does board into four. Okay. So, um... Again, being on the play is also very huge. Harry Corvisi on the right, he is on the play. He leads with just an overrun tomb. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a mana accelerant, which is another, uh, obviously, mana advantage is very important in this matchup uh, to go along with the mana denial. So um, we've seen reanimary decks in the past. They're very mana hungry. So generally, whoever can get the five mana first and start getting those acidic slimes in the play um, has a pretty big advantage. We see a mall share for Kervais. He's going to turn over two Angel Serenities at Thrap Test and Unbarrel Rights. So his Unbarrel Rights engine is online. We can see an Angel Serenity as soon as turn number four, assuming Kervais has more lands. Makes you wonder if that mulch was, I need lands, or that mulch was, I need cards in my graveyard. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. If, if he has the lands, I think he's in good shape because the one way you can actually get out of not having mana accelerants is if you can actually reanimate an Angel Serenity and deal with their, your opponent's mana accelerants before they can get that Acidic Slime into play. So, um, pretty good uh, sequence of events for Harry, despite the fact that he didn't have a turn one mana accelerant, and his opponent did. So now you see McLean casting a mulch of his own. Four is going to go to the hand. Restoration Angel, Thrax Husk, and Abrupt Decay going to the graveyard. So he does find at least one. So uh, a much worse uh, mulch there. Even though he did find the land, he didn't get an Umbrella Rights. He didn't get a Fatty. I believe he does have an Umbrella Rights in his graveyard, in his hand. But he doesn't have a, a really solid Fatty like Angel Serenity or Acidic Slime, which is the cards you really want to reanimate in this mirror match. So he's still going to be hard, but he does have a Fiend Hunter, which can potentially deal with the Angel Serenity uh, if it gets reanimated. However, Harry does have another Umbrella Rights in his hand, so he'll be able to just cast it targeting the second Angel Serenity in his graveyard to get back that uh, original Angel Serenity. So some Angel uh, chaining might be going on in the f near future here, so let's see what Josh does on his turn. Yeah, this matchup, is you, you're kind of tiptoeing around because you know that there is a... Uh, you, you know you know that there is a... Uh, a big thing always coming from the opponents at some point on on both sides. You're always cognizant of the fact that restoration, or excuse me, not not restoration, but Angel Serenity can be coming at any moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very apparent on Corvasi's side that he has access to it. And how do you want to navigate your turn so that you make sure that you don't get absolutely ruined by an Angel of Serenity? Yeah. So interesting turn here for Josh. He he just plays a fourth, a third land and passes. He does have Restoration Angel, so when the Angel of Serenity comes to play targeting the Avacyn Pilgrim, he can blink it, so he'll still have access to five mana next turn, uh, potentially. Let's see how Josh plays this turn. Yeah, Harry targeting here, looks like he's targeting his Thrag Tusk, and, the, and there is the Restoration Angel going to blink the Avacyn's Pilgrim, so Thrag Tusk is going to be underneath the Angel of Serenity. Uh, if that does get removed from play, that's going to be coming back. So not the best first angel. And oftentimes what a lot of people say in this matchup, Osif, is that it's not the first angel serenity that gets the job done. It's the second one. Yeah. And Josh does have a fiend hunter to deal with the angel serenity. But he really doesn't need to pull the trigger on that fiend hunter right now. He did draw an acidic slime. He could play a fifth land and just start going after Harry's mana, which I think is the optimal play here. Yeah, I can't imagine that he doesn't. You just want to start to bottleneck him on mana. And you mentioned how the mana acceleration is Man acceleration, excuse me, is so important in this matchup. You see McLean is actually able to steal the initiative back, even though he was on the draw this game, being able to blow up lands. And if you remember Harry's mulch, he did not have any lands off of that. So you can assume that maybe Corvacy is a little bit land light right now. Yeah, if, if he doesn't have a fifth land, uh, another land here, it's going to be even better for Josh because he does have that Umbrella Rights. He can Umbrella Rights a Restoration Angel in his graveyard mm -hmm. and blink that Avis. Uh, uh, Acidic Slime, which would fur further put Harry back on mana and would give Josh two, three, four flyers that he could block the Angel Serenity yep. with if he chooses to. So let's see here. Does Josh actually have a mana? It looks like he has an Arbor Elf. Unfortunately, Arbor Elf doesn't have any forest on tap because Josh wisely Acidic Slime the Overworld to him. Yeah, and that's often what you're going to see with Acidic Slime is either they're going to try to bottleneck your mana and, and just cut you off of one color. Most, of most often going to be white because yep. the Insurenity does cost three white, but if they can blow up your forest and actually slow down your Arbor Elves, they're going to take the opportunity to do that. And as you mentioned, the Acidic Slime taking down that land is a big deal. And by playing Arbor Elf here, as Corvacy does in passing the turn back, you can see McLean probably his eyes light up a little bit. All right, I've taken care of that forest, and I maybe can cut off his green sources and not let him operate. Yeah, so this is actually a, a great sequence for, uh, for Josh. Harry misses his fourth land here. Josh, if he chooses to, he can cast Emberia Rights, bringing back that Restoration Angel and getting rid of the Godless Shrine. If you get rid of the Godless Shrine, it turns off Woodland Cemetery and Sun Petal Grove mm -hmm. as potential lands that can come into play untapped for Harry. So, 
let's see what Josh does here. He attacks first, dropping uh, Harry down to 14. Yeah, it looks he, like Harry's hand is a lot of fire drops. He's got Umbera rights, he's got Thrag Tusk, he even has an Angel Serenity in his hand. And I absolutely love that attack there from McLean where, you know, he even serves with the Absence Pilgrim, just offering up a trade. Now he's going to Umbera rights, that Acidic Slime, going to blow up the Goblet Shrine, just as you mentioned, making it so that if Corvacy does draw any of his buddy lands and he just draws a Sun Petal Grove, right broke. now, they, it's going to have to come into play tapped and he's still going to be stunted moving forward. Yeah, so even if he does top deck a fourth land, it has to be either an Overgrown Tomb or a Godless Shrine or a Forest in order for him to actually cast a card like Restoration Angel, which we're not sure if he has in his hand or not. So now it might be time for Josh to actually cast that Fiend Hunter and get rid of that uh, Angel Serenity. It looks like he's going to start his turn off with a little graveyard action. He's going to mulch. It's hard to get a turn over a Restoration oh, wow. Angel, a Burial Rites, Temple Garden, and a Woodland Cemetery. So plus two cards there, but the more important thing here is that Restoration Angel that's just been moved into the graveyard. So now he can Burial Rites the Restoration Angel again, triggering it, targeting the Acidic Slime, and then getting rid of possibly a Woodland Cemetery, mm -hmm. keeping Harry off of black completely. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, at that point, um, he's in really good shape. Let's see what Harry does. Is Harry attacking? It looks like Harry's attacking with all his creatures. Yeah, Josh attacking with all of his oh, Josh, creatures. Yeah. Coming in here, I mean, it, it, these are like suicide restoration angels, but at the same time, with Unburial Rites looming and, and Pervasi knows that McLean has lands in his hand, there are no good blocks right now. Yep. They do not exist. Even if he blocks the Acidic Slime, the Acidic Slime and the Angels already die, he can't block there. He blocks the Restoration Angel. Restoration is just coming back anyway. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter. He's still forcing damage through. And here we see it. Restoration comes into play, and a six line takes out the Woodland Cemetery. So McLean, very far ahead in this game, just keeps adding to his board, as you said, just pushing damage through, because Imperial White's going to allow him to do that. Yes, Angel of Serenity does get to eat Restoration Angel every turn, but that does not matter. Cravasi realizes that, and he's going to concede the game thanks to a Cynic Slime. So Josh McLean. Going to win game number one here over Harry Corvacy. Junk Reanimator Mirror goes to the player who has only two Acidic Slimes in his main deck, but was able to draw one. And it just goes to show you how important that Mana Accelerant is, because Harry didn't have turn one Mana Accelerant. He did have turn four Angel Serenity, mm -hmm. but Josh had a timely Restoration Angel to protect his uh, Evison Pilgrim from getting blinked, so they could still cast uh, Acidic Slime in the next turn. Yeah. So, you know, it, you know, even though a 5-6 on turn four seems impressive, the fact is, Josh, it, get, mana denial is so important in this matchup just because you, you can't really put that much pressure on your opponent just with a 5-6 because, you know, th uh, a multiple Restoration Angels can just block it and you're just going to one for one anyway. Yeah. So uh, Josh kind of had an ideal response to a turn four Angel Serenity. So we take a look at Harry Corvace's sideboard first as he's going to be on the play for this game. Again, he does have three Acidic Slimes in his main deck and the fourth one in his sideboard, so you can assume that's going to come in. He has an additional Angel Serenity as well, a super important card in this matchup. Then things after that start to get a little bit interesting. Three Deathrite Shamans are almost automatic. Two Abrupt Decays, now you can argue things here, because Abrupt Decay can take care of mana sources, and Avacyn's Pilgrim and Arbor from his opponent can also take care of opposing Deathrite Shamans, so that could be something that he wants to sideboard in. You also see an additional Thraxos in his sideboard, a Cavern of Souls if he wants to add more mana to his deck. He has a Sever the Bloodline if he wants to control things. But the big one here for me is Slesnia Charm. Because Slesnia Charm is very interesting because it's so good against opposing Angel Serenities. But is this matchup about opposing Angel Serenities or is this matchup about Acidic Slime? That's the question. Yeah, I, I really think this matchup is mostly about um, mana denial. So the cards that matter the most are uh, Acidic Slime. Garrick Primal Hunter to sort of go after your opposing mana creatures. Those cards are really the cards you want. I think I agree with you with Abrupt Decay. I think you need Abrupt Decay because it deals with opposing Death Rite Champions. It can also deal with uh, mana creatures mm -hmm. if you think you, you need to. It also can deal with Fiend Hunters. Yep. Fiend Hunter is another card that can potentially, especially if you're on the play, if you can go turn one Abyssin Pilgrim and your opponent goes turn one Abyssin Pilgrim and you can Fiend Hunter their Pilgrim on turn two, that's still mana denial, which yes. is very good. So. I think uh, Abrupt Decay is a card that you probably want to bring in. Celestine Charm, I think that's definitely a card that he has in his matchup more for Naya decks, like big Naya decks to deal with cards like Thundermore Hellkite. Yep. However, uh, I could see him potentially bring it in, in this matchup for Angel Serenity, but it's the, the, the problem is going to be, what does he want to board out? There's not that many cards that you can effectively board out in this matchup. Thrag Tusk isn't great in this matchup, but beyond that, there's not many cards that you can really board out. 
So I think even though it's good at remove, exiling Angel Serenity, I'm just not sure he has enough cards that he can board out for it, okay. considering the other cards that he wants to bring in. Uh, on Josh's side of the board, we have a, you know, a similar sideboard. He's got two Deathrite Shamans, two more Acidic Slimes going up to four. He also has one copy of Gareth Relentless. Those are the five cards I expect him to bring in. He also rounds out a sideboard with three copies of Voice of Resurgence, two Tristani's Celestia Voice, uh, two, two Deadweight, and uh, two Sin Collectors and one opposite on Ghost Council. So those cards, obviously, um, not ideal in this matchup, um, but I think really the, the, he wants to go for the Deathrite Shaman to sort of act as a graveyard removal, and then the Mana Denial plan of Acidic Slime and Garrick Relentless. Uh, yeah, I mean, Garrick Relentless is a card that has played a huge role in these matchups, again, because it is Mana Denial. Uh, it also does flip and lets you search out things like Angel Serenity and search out Acidic Slimes and lets you start chaining off that way. Uh, what I find really interesting in, in McLean's sideboard is the copies of Deadweight because if we are just purely on a Mana Denial strategy and you want to be able to control cards like Avisman's Pilgrim and Arbor Elf, it's a one mana way to be able to do that that Junk Reanimator typically does not have access to. Yeah, the only my only problem with that card is it's so bad in the late game. Oh, it's and with very only two, narrow. Yeah, and yeah. with only two copies, it, the, the odds are you're not gonna if you don't have one in your opening hand, it's just really bad. So yeah. I don't think Josh can afford to to have those types of dead draws in the mid to late game, which is kind of what you expect this game to go to. If things go all things being equal, you're probably gonna expect this game to go to the mid to the late game, and you just can't afford to have dead draws in dead weight. McLean going to keep his hand. He's going to be on the draw this game. Corvese is mulliganing down to at least six right now. So we'll see how this is going to go. I mean, again, we saw Corvese mulligan down to four against David Sharpman playing Jun and be able to win. And he actually won in pretty convincing fashion in that game, too. So do not discount anything here because you see a mulligan here from Corvese. Uh, and yeah, definitely one of the decks that can mulligan pretty well in this format is Junk Reanimator, which is part of its appeal. Uh, the question is, can Harry's Mulligan overcome uh, an aggressive Mana Denial hand from Josh? That's really what we're going to have to see here. Harry is on the play, so if he has turn one to Mana Accelerant, um, he's still in good shape. The thing about Junk Reanimator is sometimes you'll just see them Mulligan in order to get the hand they think they need to win. It's not, it's not so often that they'll Mulligan just because they have all land or n all spells. A lot of times they'll Mulligan aggressively because they know there's certain hands they need in certain matchups in order to be successful. So let's see what Harry does here. He's going to check to see if his six cards are uh, happy, if he's happy with the six cards. Josh is obviously happy with his seven, and it looks like Harry is debating it. And nope, he's going down to five here. Wow. Maybe setting him up for the mulligan to four win again. No, you don't think so? Well, Harry did. Maybe <laughs> Harry's feeling a little confident. He did, he did win a match. Uh, he did win a game after a mulligan to four, so maybe he's like, meh, not a big deal. Yeah. Five cards. They didn't want to do it again. Maybe the, maybe the camera's just not too friendly yeah. for, the, uh, for the soccer coach here. Well, to be honest, again, there are certain draws that even off of five cards are still very, very good for Harry. Agreed. Um, and I think, you know, part of Junk Reanimator's appeal is the fact that it mulligans well. Uh, it generally is very good against mid rangey decks. You, have, you, you get to play Restoration Angel and Thrag Tusk. So I think that the, um, there's just a lot of things going for Junk Reanimator. And the biggest appeal, though, for me at least, is you're going to be playing in a long tournament. You want a deck that mulligans well. You know, you, you, the, the, the tournaments where you do the best are usually the ones where you don't have to mulligan often or your deck doesn't punish you that much if you go down to six or five cards. Because it's going to happen throughout the course of a tournament. It's only natural. It's magic. Yep. You are going to mulligan sometimes, <laughs> believe it or not. So Harry goes down to five. He's going to check to see if his five cards hand is uh, a keeper. Looks like it's we have a, some better. lands and a sever the bloodline at least. So not the best five card hand but certainly not the worst he's going to lead off here with a temple garden and an addison this is, okay this looks a lot better than i thought it would now of course a mulch is going to go a long way to undoing this mulligan potentially a grizzly salvage as well so we'll see what corvese can find see if mclean has a mana accelerant too i think that's a big deal here just a temple garden passing means he does not so a uh, mulch would be a huge draw right here same thing with the Grizzly Savage, but nope, it looks like Harry just drew land for the turn. He's going to swing over with the Absent Pilgrim. Thankfully, Josh doesn't have a Mana Accelerant, so things aren't too terrible for draw for Harry right here. However, um, let's see what the mulch from ha Josh reveals. Looks like three lands and a Deathrite Shaman, so there's one of those death sideboarded Deathrite Shaman. So this could play a huge role in this matchup there for McLean. But after that mulch does resolve, it looks like he's going to have to discard something else moving forward. 
and it looks like it's going to be an Angel Serenity. Pretty easy discard, I think. Yeah, and he does have an Embarrow Rights in his hand. Oh, I'm not sure if he can discard two cards or not. Wow, if he's discarding two cards, it, yeah, it looks like he has to discard two cards, so he can discard Acidic Slime and an Embarrow Rights, setting himself up for a turn four Embarrow Rights, Acidic Slime, and destroy one of your own hands. Yeah, that's a pretty big game, actually. I mean, you can make the argument where he could discard their Embarrow Rights and Angel Serenity. But I think, again, that this matchup, as we mentioned, is so much more about Acidic Slime than Angel Serenity. That's the card that you want to discard. As you see, McLean has drawn now, this turn, a Garrick Relentless. So he does not have any Man Acceleration. The big question here is, just, is does uh -oh. Scarvese have Acidic Slime of his own? He, he does. Too. Wow. Okay. Huge draw there for Harry. He's got the Acidic Slime to keep Josh off of four mana before he can cast Embarrow Rights or the Garrick Primal Hunter. So now Josh is going to have to uh, lose his Overgrown to him, it looks like. And he doesn't have he doesn't have, even have a Grizzly Salvage to really uh, cast this turn, so he has no action play. Looks like he just drew a land this turn. Yeah, his hand appears to be Angel Serenity, Restoration Angel, and Garrick along with land, so he doesn't have any plays to make. Let's see if Harry can uh, push the advantage here with a Restoration Angel or another Acidic Slime. Draws his card for the turn, can't make it out. Right now, it looks like he still has that Sever of the Bloodline in his hand, so he has protection against. Uh, Angel Serenity potentially later in the game if that matters but so he swings over for three dropping Josh down to 15 and wow there's a Restoration Angel blinking in Acidic Slime taking out an Isolated Chapel so keeping Josh off of Black Mana currently. This is a pretty unreal draw for a mulligan to fly from Harry. I mean, he's really just trying. The, the scary thing here for Cravacy is that he knows that McLean has lands because of Mulch. Yep. He doesn't have a mana accelerant, but he knows that McLean has lands from the Mulch, so he needs to keep him off of four lands. But now, <laughs> oh my goodness, here is another, yet another restoration, restoration angel. Restoration. So not only uh, now at this point, he doesn't really have to worry that much about keeping Josh off of lands because no. he's got enough pressure on board to just kill him in a turn. So McLean's plan of discarding Acidic Slime at the time when he discarded it made perfect sense. Imagine now if he had discarded Angel Serenity instead. Yeah, he Angel Serenity is the card that gets him back into this game. And it looks like Harry drew another Acidic Slime. You got oh my <laughs> lord. So Harry quite adept at mulganing to <laughs> low number. McLean's <laughs> gonna pick up his last two cards and see the game. And you see wow. the look of frustration on his face. How could he not be? Is he gonna go back to his sideboard? Cravacy taking a bit of a deep breath here, Oof. a little little buck in his step, up in his chair, and <laughs> takes a look at the camera with wide eyes as he ties this one back up. Maybe mulganing is good for him. And it, it, I gotta say, the granted, you know, that's a little lucky there, but the the key the consistent factor in both games were the player with the man accelerant ended up winning the match. Oh yeah. Winning the game, right? Oh yeah. So, uh, really, that's probably the, that's the most important thing. If one player has a man accelerant, the other doesn't. It doesn't matter how impressive your mulches are or your grizzly salvages are. It really comes down to do you have a mana advantage over your opponent? And that's what we saw in both these games so far. Despite Harry going down to five cards, he was still able to actually pull it out thanks to some timely uh, acidic slimes. We have a uh, uh, someone on Twitter. Uh, we'll go with Heladad09 wondering if uh, Harry Corvesi is now the master of the mulligan. It's, uh, it's hard to argue otherwise Yeah. <laughs> after these two games that we've got to watch him play. It's, it's the odds of you winning a game after you mulligan to four or a game after you mulligan to five, it's very low. To do it twice in the same tournament is pretty impressive. And both times featured too. We, he might have done it in the in the Swiss when we just haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, we don't even yeah, know, we, we don't know all the story here. <laughs> Although we do, we have seen on camera, camera twice Mulgan to five and four and win both those games. So very impressive Mulganing skills from Harry Corvisi. No. And again, we don't really know did he Mulgan because he knows he has to Mulgan if he doesn't have um, a certain draw, or did he Mulgan just because his hands were bad? Obviously, if you Mulgan to five, there's probably one hand where it was just terrible hand. But there's some Mulgans where it's just like. If I don't have, a, if I'm playing the Reanimator Mirror and I don't have a Mana Accelerant and I don't have the potential for a turn four reanimation spell, I pretty much have to ship that hand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just too slow yeah. in the mirror. No matter how good your hand looks on the surface, I mean, McLean's hand there with the mulch. I mean, as far as things go, if I, if I'm Josh McLean, I told you that that your opponent Harry Corvasi is going to mulligan to five. Your mulch is going to be borderline perfect because you get to discard not one but two cards. Yep. You're going to be pretty happy with how things are going. Acidic slime being reanimated on turn four on the draw. Yeah, you have a Cidic Slime reanimating turn four on the draw, and your opponent Mulligan to five, and you still have an Angel Serenity in your hand with plenty of mana to eventually cast yes. it. Yes. And that's the other thing. You, you you had a pretty good mulch, and you have plenty of mana, so even if Harry does go after your lands, as long as you can actually just 
keep the tempo and he's not able to put enough pressure on you, you'll eventually be able to draw out of it because you have so many lands. But Harry just had too many Restoration Angels and too many Acidic Slimes. And it's kind of funny, right, where I think like some people would look at that game and say, like, I think, you know, if I'm Josh McLean right now, what, what's going through my head of, you know, maybe I just got really unlucky, but, you know, people could make the argument of like, yeah, you're like, you're supposed to discard Angel of Serenity there instead of Acidic Slime, but I, I don't think that's absolute at all. No. I think it's the way that that game broke, as odd as it was, where Kervasi drew borderline perfect, where I think in the abstract, with the mulch on turn two, you're 100% discarding Acidic Slime a lot of the time there. You know, it ends up that maybe discarding Angel of Serenity because of how things broke was correct. That's what makes Magic such an unbelievable game because the things that changed in that game, that game changed immensely mm -hmm. from turn two to turn four as Kervasi is getting himself an advantage again by taking another mulligan. I, I just don't think Kervasi likes seven cards. I no. think he just chooses... Yeah. <laughs> I think it, I, w I, I wonder whether or not his win percentage is better when he has less than seven cards. I sincerely think, I know, all kidding aside, I sincerely think that these are aggressive mulligans. Yeah, because, I, I agree. You know, the one thing that you often see with aggressive mulligans, you see that with hyper-aggressive decks, decks like Affinity, decks that uh, red-based aggressive decks. That's what you normally see. Now, I know that you and I have been playing Magic for a very long time. Fires of Yavimaya, that deck is before my time. Um, but was that a deck that people would like, aggressively mulligan for mana accelerants with so that you could just go one to three to four to five? The, the thing that uh, a lot of new players don't understand is there are certain hands that appear to be good because they have good cards. So a hand like Garrick Primal, Garrick Relentless, Restoration Angel, Thrag Tusk, and Four Lands might appear good to a, a newer player. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I have, I have the Restoration Angel Thrag Tusk combo, I have a Planeswalker. It's a pretty good hand. The problem is, if you're on the draw and you're playing the Reanimator Mirror, that is a terrible hand. It is simply too slow, despite mm -hmm. the fact that you have some powerful cards. So, I think that if you're if you're very skilled with your deck and you've played Magic for a long time, you know there are certain simply there are certain hands that, despite the, the, the fact that they might look good on the surface, you have to mulligan them in order to give yourself the best chance of winning. So I think that's the same thing. Like you mentioned, fires. There were certain hands that you just couldn't keep in the mirror, and I think Harry kind of knows that. And again, the amount that he's mulliganing, going down to five, going down to four in certain instances. Part of that has to do with just getting a little unlucky sure. and getting unplayable hands. But I think part of it has to do with the fact that he's probably being a little aggressive with his mulligans because he knows the deck very well, he knows the mirror match, and he knows what hands he can keep and what hands he can't keep. Yeah, I think he really knows the value of having a Man Accelerant. And you know, that's part of the reason that I brought up the dead weights in McLean's sideboard because I 100% agree with you that that card is so narrow mm -hmm. that it's not ideal to bring in because it's so bad per, past like turn three. Yeah. But how important is it to kill Man Accelerant on the opening turns of the game in this matchup? It, it seems very, very important. Yeah, and you and you know the one game where Harry didn't mulligan was game one, and he didn't have a man accelerant, yeah, but he did crushed. have he did have a pretty good reanimation plan. He had he had a mulch in his hand, and uh, he had an embarrassment in his hand. So, I think if you if you don't have a man accelerant, but you think you have the possibility of a turn four reanimation spell on the play, I think it's a reasonable keep. However, it just didn't work out for him that game. So Corvais is going to keep on five cards. You see, McLean starts off with a Deathrite Shaman, an all-star in this matchup. Corvais is going to play a Woodland Cemetery and pass the turn back. You see, Corvais's hand is not very exciting. One card that he does have currently in his hand is a Selesnia Charm. But McLean currently does not have a Mana Accelerant, but Deathrite Shaman can act as a makeshift Mana Accelerant if there's a Grizzly Salvage or a Mulch involved. You see him tapping two mana, and it looks like it is going to be a Grizzly Salvage. So we see acceleration here potentially from McLean turning over an Overgrown Tomb, an Arbor Elf, an Acidic Slime, another Grizzly Salvage, and an Avacyn's Pilgrim. So that was a um, pretty good uh, Grizzly sa Grizzly Salvage. The he probably would have preferred a couple more lands to hit so that he could activate his Deathrite Shaman more than just once. However, he does get an Acidic Slime out of the deal, and at least one land, so if he chooses to, he can actually cast Garrick Relentless next turn. However, given the fact that he has the Acidic Slime now, he probably wants to cast that Acidic Slime on turn four. So it let's see what Harry does this turn. If we, if Harry cast, yeah, if Harry had a Manic Sauron, I would say Josh probably goes for the Garrick here. However, oh wow, so it looks like we have a Mulch too here. So he's doing just fine for yeah, himself. Yeah, so I don't think he wants to cast a Garrick here. He wants to make sure that Acidic Slime definitely hits mm -hmm. play next turn. Assuming, so mul assuming Mulch hits lands, which we see a Woodland Cemetery, it's going to hit at least one. You see two other Mulches and a uh, an Acidic Slime go to the bin, and then the Woodland Cemetery go to hand. Yeah, so now that he also has uh, an Isolated Chapel, Woodland Cemetery, and he also has a Restoration Angel in his hand, so next turn we're definitely going to see that Acidic Slime enter play unless Deathrite Shaman is dealt with. Yeah. If so Harry has a way to deal with the Deathrite Shaman, 
then there's a chance that we won't see the acidic slam. I actually like McLean's play a lot here too, where he considered attacking, but instead holds back because he realizes that two is more than one. Yeah. And so he can actually just remove a card with Death Right Shaman, but he oddly enough does not do that. I'm a little surprised there, not removing one of those mulches in the graveyard to uh, have Harry lose two. He may have gotten a little bit ahead of himself, but at the end of the day, we're gonna see him remove a land and cast an acidic slime and get this party started yet again. Well, it's going to actually be unburial rights on this. So city here's slime, an unburial sure. rights on this city slime. Either way, it gets the job done. Um, I think I might have preferred to cast the acidic slime just because there's a chance Harry might have some sort of graveyard removal spell like purify the grave. Yeah. Um, it's a little risky. You definitely just want to get that acidic slime into play, especially since you have a restoration angel in your hand. However, either way, acidic slime comes into play, deals with the woodland cemetery, leaving only Harry with two lands. None of them overgrown to a more isolated <laughs> godless shrine. So. Harry doesn't even draw a third land and just packs it in. Yeah, and Harry asks, do you have anything? And Harry knows he has the other slime in his hand and says, do you have ways to kill my lands? McLean says, yeah, I got a Restoration Angel and a slime, man. And Harry is going to pack it up. So Josh McLean from Team Mana Deprived wins this match 2-1 to one over Harry, Harry excuse me, Corvasi in the Junker Animator Mirror. It's all about mana acceleration, and in turn, it's all about mana denial.